Hello guys and welcome to the best of 3 series show matches between Ervi from Slovenia against Sauron from Canada for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King. The matchup is Engmar against Man of the West, good against evil. On a brand new map, the Forts of Anduin, which was existing for BFME 2 now for a, for a while, but now we get to use it for Rise of the Witch King as well. And yeah, I like the good against evil matchups the most, uh, because I feel like, you know, this is like more like a movie-like thing, <laughs> and I enjoy it big time. On the right side, we have the yellow Man of the West player Irby against the blue Engmar player Sauron. This is a reskin from Forts of Aizen, and for me, that's the best reskin from Forts of Aizen. Look at the river, everything is looking so much more beautiful. By the way, we are using the HD edition for Rise of the Witch King, so the units are gonna be looking oh, also good great. Now. Two mills for the Angmar player, two farms for Irby, the Man of the West player on the right side. Uh, both of those players are participating in the current World Championship 2020 with a cash prize of $500 and they are looking very strong in their group stages. And there is a high chance that they might face against each other in the you know later stages of the tournament. Maybe quarterfinals, maybe semifinals, and even maybe in the finals. As those two players are currently the best, you know, two of the best players of Rise of the Witch King. So the, the barracks is coming up after two farms into the third farm for Irby. And we have two mills into the Hall of the Kingsman, into the third mill from Sauron, the Engmar player. The first units from Irby are gonna be those soldiers, so he's gonna go for an attack. I mean, um, you know, normally we see pikemen instead, so the players are fighting for the map control, going for the creep at the right side of the, you know, river, the work layer, but in this case Irby wanna play a little bit more aggressively. On the other side, Trial Master units, the first one is joining the fight, and will be turned potentially into the Ganzabad warriors or extrovers. But that's a smart move from Sauron, not transforming them immediately and waiting to see what his opponent is gonna do. Because Erby might have started with a stable, and if you wait, you can, you know, after you see the Gondonites, you can always turn them into the pikemen. Um, they won't be able to see each other, and Erby is gonna get damage here from the Vark. He's gonna lose two of his units, by the way, which is quite unfortunate. And he's gonna turn them into the Ganzabad warriors. Rallying Call is available and Warchant is available as well. The second unit, the Trial Master, will be able to see those soldiers, but he's gonna go forward instead of defending. The second production building is gonna be the Troll in Wolfden from the Engmar player Sauron. The farm has been demolished by Irby, as Warchant was used offensively. In a 1v1 situation, normally soldiers should be out damaging the Gandabad warriors, but in this case they are being buffed, and Irby might be forced to use his rallying call defensively. He's not using it here because there is no point. The wolf riders are out in time to trample down those soldiers and to defend this mill from getting destroyed. Nice one. I can see Irby using the rallying call here defensively, but he needs to do it now because he loses so many units here during this time. The second uh, Gantabad warrior battalion is getting damaged by the soldiers and the Troll Master is gonna get sniped down, which will end up killing the entire battalion. And the Gondor Knights just in time arriving and trampling down those units before the second farm could get destroyed. Irby now has a buff advantage, boys. Buff advantage in Rise of the Witch King, you know, means a lot. And the Gondor Knights are much stronger than Wolf Riders, so in a 1v1 situation they're gonna be able to outdamage them. They're almost level 2, and the Gondor Knights, they are still only level 1. The Wolf Packs are joining the fight next, and he needs to get some pikemen on the field now, as soon as possible. Wolf Packs shouldn't be able to fight the Gondor Knights, as you can see. Rallying Cove was used now from Irby, and he will be able to take down this mill pretty much uncontested. Wolf Riders are retreating from Sauron. There is right now no pressure on Irby anymore after being able to take down one of those starting farms. Irby, nice choice by the way, decides to fight instead of committing to the mill because he knows he has a buff advantage, he knows the Gondor Knights are stronger than the Wolf Packs and the Wolf Riders, he knows he can win the 1v1. 
But now he needs to retreat because pikemen are on the way. And they might be trapped here. Uh, it looks like they are gonna struggle to leave this area. They are almost level 2. But nice surrounding here from uh, Sauron. He needs to retreat kind of with those Wolfriders. And the Gondor Knights will be able to get away. Irby in the meantime creeping the work layer at the right side of the river. And moving even to the work layer at the bottom right side on the map. Forts of Anduin. I wanted to say Forts of Eisen because you know. It's a pretty new map for Rise of the Witch King. The Gondor Knights, they are trapped here at the corner at the top left side. And they will be taken down, unfortunately, for the Man of the West player, Irby. But luckily, he will be able to get a second creep here, which means more experience, more power points, and more treasure. Uh, Sauron, in the meantime, was expanding at the top side. And right now, we have um, 400 command points available for Engma. And 450 command points available for the Men of the West faction. 4 power points collected, 3 power points collected. The Wolf Riders, they gotta be careful. There are still some Spearman units around, but not anymore. And one of the greatest counters to the Pikemen are gonna be definitely those Wolf Packs. They are dealing incredible amount of damage and taking down those Rohan Spearman units very fast. The Archer Range is coming up next now. That's gonna be the third production building from Irby. We have more Spearmen, Soldiers and Gondor Knights coming. Stable level 1, Baraxis level 1 and Archer range will be potentially upgraded to level 2 first. Because the, you know, the power spike you get from getting Rangers instead of Gondor Archers is actually huge in this game. As Gondor Archers are very weak, while Rangers are hitting like an absolute truck. Um, still 400 command points for Sauron, he wasn't expecting uh, expanding <laughs> that nicely. 4 power points collected after Warchan, which is available now. The farm is gonna get destroyed from Irby. Irby is playing very defensively now because he knows he needs to defend his attack. He knows his opponent has a buff advantage. That's why he's building a statue here, which is gonna give him leadership. And Engma early on, uh, until he gets Sorcerers on the field or Witch King, doesn't have a way of negating the enemy leadership. I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, heroes like Theodin could be a great choice against Engma, but we also know that heroes like Eowyn are a great counter to the, to the Trailmaster units from the Engma faction, because Eowyn's spear, the smite ability, can one-shot the Trailmaster, and with that being said, you can actually kill an entire battalion with a single spear shot. Waldo is on the field now, which is gonna give a double buff, potentially, for the Hillman units. Extrovers, Pikemen and Gandabad Warriors are gonna get benefit from that. Going the Archers first, from Irby. I think Irby is in a great standing here, and he has enough units to protect himself. With the leadership he's, you know, gaining from the stage in the back, and there is no way, again, for the Engma player to nullify the leadership and to debuff the enemy units. Yes, the leadership is not as impactful, in a army fight as a buff because while buffs like Rallying Coal and Warchan are increasing your damage and armor by 50% each, the leadership is only increasing the damage and armor by 33% but on top of that you are also gaining 50% increased combat experience. Uh, 6 power points collected but if I take a look into the minimap it looks really great for the Angler player Sauron. Yes, Waldo being level 2.5, with level 3, he's gonna unlock the pillage ability, which means whenever he kills enemy units or the allies, allied units around him, he's gonna get money, like a scavenger ability from the goblin faction, for example. The farm is gonna be the target, but nice protection here from Irby. He might still lose it though, because many units of Irby are not able to attack. Waldo is coming and Sauron is making the right call, trying to attack him from multiple sides because he knows he can't win a fight which is gonna happen around this area. Because Gonda Arch is gonna be nicely protected. Oh, both riders are coming, nice trample, Rallying Call was used from Irby. Rangers are unprotected and gonna get trampled down by those wolf riders. And they are very squishy in terms of armor, but he has a well and they didn't get one-shotted. They're gonna heal up over time. And quality goes over quantity and those rangers are gonna be able to take down those extrovers from a much longer range. Yes, extrovers are normally a great counter to archers, but keep in mind that the range of those archers is much longer than uh, from extrovers. 
Okay. Um, Felvin Warchant, almost 7 power points collected afterwards from the Engma player Sauron. He is sitting on 650 command points against 560 command points from the yellow Man of the West player Irby. He has Riding Cold Heal buff on cooldown and 3 power points collected afterwards. So buff is on cooldown from both the players, but they have both leadership as well. So Sleechu is giving leadership, but also Hualdo is giving leadership. The farm here is gonna be definitely taken down. Archer range is level 2, stable level 1, and Barracks is level 1 as well. During all this time, I see Temple of Twilights coming up. After two Hall of the Kingsmen, one of them is all about to get upgraded to level 3 for the Dark Rangers to arrive. Uh, Troll and Wolf then is still level 1. And Temple of Twilight means we're gonna see magical shenanigans. We're gonna see sorcerers joining the battlefield soon. Um, it looks like Irby doesn't have any Gondonites on the field anymore. He made two of them, but I guess he was losing both of them. Um, making one more is gonna be necessary because you will need some mobile units, in this case Gondonites, to fight for the map control. Uh, Snowbind was used from Sauron to protect this level 2 mill, and he will be able to do that. But that's gonna delay his 10 power point ability, which could potentially be Frozen Land. Because. Once the Dark Rangers are gonna arrive on the field, as they are all about to do, you wanna need you wanna need those abilities like Felwind that can group, you know, pull enemy units together so they can't escape the incoming damage from the uh, arrow wind or arrow volley. Long shot, I mean, sorry. <laughs> or you wanna have something like Frozen Land, which is decreasing the movement speed of the enemy units, so they are, you know very slowed down, so they can't dodge the incoming damage again. And yeah, Irby is trying to put some counter pressure, but it is easier said than done, because now uh, he has Sorcerers, you know, purchasing the Well of Souls. Uh, Temple of Twilight is level 2. He can also go for the level 3 upgrade, which is gonna unlock the Corpse Rain. Sorcerers are very unique units in the game. Since Engma doesn't have those health, uh, you know, those, those, how can I call them? Like mini heroes, like all the other factions have. Like the Knights of Dol Amroth for the Men of the West faction. Like, uh, you know, uh, Zealots for the Dwarven faction. Uruk Deathbringers for the Isengard faction. Or Nolder Warriors from the Elven faction. Engma can make Sorcerers limitless. They are not able to attack the enemy units, so they don't have any attack damage but they are able to influence the fights in your favor with their abilities and spells. But the rangers are gonna be able to take them down very fast. Anyways, it's gonna be the biggest fight incoming in the game number one in the best of three series between Irby against Sauron. You have now Faramir on the field. Faramir is a great counter to those sorcerers as well. Why? Because they are very squishy and you can kill them very quickly. But you can see that you don't want to underestimate the damage output from those rangers with double buff now. Gondonites are also here and he has zero pikemen around. Calvin is being used. Longshot is not incoming though. And even with the longshot he wouldn't be able to one-shot them because they have double buff now. It's a really bad fight to take for the Engmar player Sauron he's gonna lose every single unit around this area. Waldo might also be in trouble. Longshot is incoming. But you can see they are not taking too much damage at this point. It was a really bad fight to take and Faramir was able to get a lot of experience here. He is level 2.5 already and with level 6 he's gonna unlock the Captain of Gondor leadership. Which means they have mobile leadership and they don't need to sit around this area. And we have also Boromir joining the fight, his brother. The brothers are fighting now for the Man of the West player Irby in the game number 1 against Sauron. Waldo has to be very careful, he's level 3.5, with level 5 he will be able to summon more reinforcements, the Call Hillman ability. Boromir's Horn of Gondor is gonna be very effective as well, because Engma doesn't have a way of gaining fear resistance. Wanding Arrow was used on Waldo, if you didn't know, Wanding Arrow is a very strong single target ability, which slows down enemy units and even enemy heroes. <laughs> And yeah, sorcerers, you can see that, it's a lot of investment, but they can't do anything, they are getting pretty much one-shotted, they are getting trampled down, and they can't withstand the damage. 
and they cost uh, 400 each without the upgrades you need to purchase on them to make them actually very effective. A big army with two heroes in front of the Engma base. Waldo is very low and can't approach this army. Belvin is on cooldown, so is the Warchant. He has almost 10 power points collected, can choose to summon potentially orcs or frozen land. In this case, orcs would be you know, definitely a better choice, but I guess uh, they, get, they can just get trampled down by those Gondor Knights within seconds. Nice long shot actually, Erby was not touching, Snowbind was used on this level 1 mill. But during all this time, Erby is regaining map control and has now 735 command points, even though Engma player has also 7, 825 command points actually because of those mills, which are untouched now for a while. 11 power points, no trolls are cleaning up, Hobbit allies summon. Baramir is hitting level 3. Boromir is standing close to his brother to share experience. Waldo has to be careful. Hobbits are a great counter to heroes. And yes, Waldo is forced to retreat. That was a great defense after all from the Engma play with those snot rolls just in time. But rangers are everywhere. More of them are gonna follow up. And I think the mistake right now... There are two towers by the way from the Engma player Sauron. The mistake right now from Erby is the fact that he has zero pikemen around. I mean, he has like two units from a battalion, and that's not gonna be enough. Is Boromir level 2 though? That's the question, let me check. If yes, he can always use the Horn of Gondo just before the Snow Trolls can trample them down. And it also looks like that Engma player Sauron is gonna go for the Summon White, which will be used now. Galvin is gonna be used to pull them together. Rallying Call is gonna be used from Erby. Hobbits are still on the field. There are some pikemen now, snow trolls, they gotta be careful, Horn of Gondor is kicking in, that's what I mean, Horn of Gondor is so, so effective. And Engma can't negate the effect of fear, that means those snow trolls, they are trapped and they can't move. Longshot is incoming from those rangers, but they are buffed from the rallying cold, they're not gonna die with one shot. Luckily some of those snow trolls will be able to get away, potentially, but he chooses to commit, never mind he's trying to run for his life. And yeah, in those situations you can see, how impactful those heroes are in Rise of the Witch King. Waldo is, uh, by the way, level 4, still one more level needed for the uh, reinforcements to call. Paramir is almost level 5, one level needed for the leadership to be unlocked. Boromir can also unlock leadership with level 5. Theoden is here for the leadership part though. He can give leadership with level 1, which is not limited. With limited I mean like heroes, like Waldo, who is exclusively giving leadership to some specific unit types. In this case, Hillman units, right? And also like heroes like Eomir, giving leadership exclusively to Gondor Knights and Rohirrim. Or the Gothmog from the Moro faction, only doing it for the Orcs, Orc Archers and Black Orcs. There are heroes like Theodin, Elrond, that can give leadership with level 1 to any unit in the game. That's why they are very strong and Theodin is one of the cheapest ones and one of the best sportive heroes in the game alongside with King Dane. King Dane might be situationally a little bit better because he gives you also fear resistant with level 2 with the stubborn pride and then with level 4 he can even give you leadership I mean a spell buff which always also stacks with your leadership um, so you can make your units very strong and also the level 4 ability from King Dane from the Dwarven faction can be used on enemy units to debuff them. So, I would say after all, King Dean and then, you know, actually Gorkil the Goblin King are the best heroes when it comes to sport, the uh, units around them. Parami was able to get away, <coughs> barely, he's now level 5, and we have actually a lot of heroes from Erby on the field. Uh, Boromir is here, Theoden is here level 2, Theoden level 6 ability is the best spell for the Gondor Knights and Rohirrim, the Glorious Charge. But this time the Engma player has a bunch of Dark Rangers on the field. And he is gonna make even some more sorcerers as he has now some protection. And because of the command points he has, he has actually a great amount of resource income. But look how many Gondor Knights Irby has now on the field. Marketplace with the Grand Harvest is gonna increase the resource income from those farms. Three of them are level 3. He has a Siege Works now, Gondor Workshop. And I think he's gonna at some point start making trebuchets. Irby has almost full command points and 15, nearly 16 power points collected. Um, because of the power point choice here from Sauron, as he was investing 5-5 five, five into Snowbind and Felwind and then 10 for the Summon White, he's actually a little bit behind. 
At some point, Blight could be very useful against the army here. Blight is one of the best abilities, actually, when it comes to take down enemy units. Because we're gonna turn them to white. Nice long shots incoming, by the way, from multiple ranges, but they are not protected at all. Warchant is gonna be used. Ranger Special Summon from the Spellbook by Irby. Rangers against Dark Rangers. The Gondonites, though, they are diving in. Ooh, yeah. The trample damage is real and everything is falling apart. Heal will be used just in time with the double buff to those Gondonites are so effective, but so are the snow trolls. The rangers and the dark range at the same time are going down. Boromir uh, was using the Horn of Conta before it's on cooldown and the dark rangers are gone, but so are the normal rangers. Now we have a fight between snow trolls against so many Gondonites. You don't want to underestimate their damage output when Theodin is being around. Your fortress is not gonna be safe. Is Snowbind ability available? Yes, it is. He might be forced to use it on this level 3 mil. If he doesn't, he will lose it and he will be using it now. We have Waldo getting level 5 now from the works on the work layer. One of those ranges was able to survive. Those two towers are still up on the field as well. And Sauron is building multiple towers, but at this point, I don't think it's gonna be very effective because he has Gondonites on the field and he's gonna make some trebuchets soon as well. Level 3 Archer Range, Fighter Upgrade is gonna pur be purchased soon, I'm assuming. He can also go for the Blacksmith to purchase upgrades like Forge Blades and Heavy Armor. His Tower Guards now from the level 2 Barracks. They are much tankier, much stronger uh, than Rohan Spearman units. Hillman will be called from Hualdor level 5, trying to get to this Trebuchet. One of those towers has been taken down in the Dark Ranges once again, not protected. Nice micro from Irby. Game is Fiesta. Tyrion is almost level 4, the level 6 is gonna be the time for the King of Rohan to shine. But some of those Gondor Knights are running it down to the Rohan, to the Spearman units from the Engma player Sauron. Uh, he, you know, I think the investment of the money into the Sorcerers and into the Temple of Twilight in general wasn't that effective. And that's what I mean. I mean, I know people are complaining about the battle towers, but you can easily destroy them if you have siege weapons on the field. And once those firestone upgrades are gonna be purchased for those trebuchets, they're gonna hit like an absolute truck. Not against, not only against um, structures, but also against units. Our guards are here. The snow trolls can't approach them. Nice protection, nice sieging here. 12 and a half power points collected. Still 925 command points available, but this time. Those tower guards are actually destroying those mills. That's gonna reduce the command points and reduce the resource income from the Engma player Sauron. He's still far away. Longshot is incoming, Vitalize summon once again to take down those towers, I mean trebuchets. But look the damage from those Firestone upgraded trebuchets, boys. The Vites, they're gonna need a lot of time actually to take them down. And the Vites, not even they can burst down those tower guards as they are very tanky. The Gondor Knights with Theodin are running for the map control. The level 3 mil will be potentially taken down as, as Snowbind is on cooldown. Calvin is gonna be used. Is this gonna be enough to defend this? I don't think so. I think Snow Trolls are very strong and we have Rogash, the troll of the north, uh, actually joining the battlefield. Nice hits, 15 power points un unlocked now, but the Felvin is on cooldown. He needs to do something about the current situation. He's gonna go for the Blight. He's gonna potentially use it on top of those units. Snow Trolls are diving in. That's what he wants. He wants you to be grouped. And we're gonna see now the army of the Vites joining the battlefield. But he needs to do it fast. Boromir is now level 4. Captain of Gonzo is uh, uh, available. Rogash is hitting level 2 as well. The troll at the bottom left side is still remaining on the field. So he can use the dominate troll on the creep at the bottom left side. Or at the top right side. This, troll, this tower is gonna keep killing this troll all the time, so he's eventually gonna get so many power points. But look, the army of the Vites in the middle of the map. Nice defense after all, but we need to keep in mind that Blight has a long cooldown. And I think uh, Irby will have enough time to use that in his advantage, in his favor. And as he was even able to save those trebuchets with the Firestone upgrade. Paramir, very strong, one-shotting the Trollmaster Battalion. Uh, Boromir is off position, but was able to get away, and I don't see where Theoden is. Theoden was also able to get away. That's actually nice. He was even able to save a level 2 ranger battalion. Our guards are very strong, but look the damage income from those Firestone upgraded trebuchets, even against Rogash, who is one of the tankiest heroes in the game. 
has to retreat after two shots. And those tower, those trebuchets, if you can't take them down, they're gonna be able to take down your take down your fortress within seconds. Tower guards are so tanky, level three. Look how much time those rangers need to take them down. Rogash is gonna need level five definitely for a leap attack, which can be used against clumped units and very effective. Think about the leap attack from Gimli, level two. And with level 7, he's gonna unlock the Rage of the North, which is gonna make him to one of the best 1v1 swordmen in Rise of the Witch King, alongside with Glorfinn the level 3 and Aragorn level 2 with the Blade Master. Okay, we have Sorceress again on the field, he's gonna try it again, but look at this. Uh, that's what I mean, entire battalion has been taken on Hobbits on top of the enemy units. Katas are coming in clutch, Longshot is incoming, is Felv in the ability available? No, it isn't. So a couple of those ranges are gonna get taken down, he has even heavy armor purchase on those tower guards. They are so incredible tanky. Faramir is gonna be taken down though, 126 for killing Faramir. Horn of Condor will be used. Everything is being kinda invested in this big fight and Erby once again was able to save his trebuchet. That's so nice. Waldo might be trapped here. And holy moly guys, those tower guards with the heavy armor they are so hard to take down, but here he's clumped against him. Never mind. Level almost 60 or the Inglorious Charge is gonna be unlocked soon. Gondor Knights with heavy armor, ladies and gentlemen. Very tanky as well. Now, Glorious Charge. For death and glory. There we go. They are glowing and bright like a diamond. Look the damage income now from those units fell in, but what now? I don't think you're gonna be able to burst them down. The 3,000 resource investment into the Rogash was potentially a mistake and army of the dead will be called as Sauron is gonna call it GG and that's gonna be the game numero uno in the best of three between Ervi against Sauron boys. Alright boys, the game number two is gonna begin now. Ervi was changing his faction from the Men of the West to the Mordor and today we're gonna see now, the game number two I mean, we're gonna see who is stronger, the Witch King from Mordor or the Witch King from Engma? Evil against evil. At the right side, we have the blue Engma player Sauron against the yellow Mordor player Erby from Slovenia. Both players are participating in the World Championship and both of them are doing a great job so far. Two slaughterhouses from Erby and two mills from Sauron. Engmar against Mordor, I think, is one of the best and most balanced matchups. Mess up matchups? Even is this even an English word? <laughs> I mean, I think you might have figured out by now that, you know, I'm not from England or not from USA. So I'm from Germany. Excuse me. But I'm gonna make some mistakes when it comes to cast those games in a language which is not my own language, if this makes sense. Alright, two slaughterhouses into the orc pit, into the third one. On the other side, we have two mills into the Hall of the Kingsmen, into the third mill. He's making use of these uh, rocks around this area because they're gonna body block kinda those uh, potential orcs. And it's gonna be kinda more hard, or harder in this case, English by the way, <laughs> to take down this mill. Alright. Um, I like waterfall on the right side of the river. Exactly. It looks really nice. Look at this, boys. It looks very nice. This map is looking so beautiful. This map is looking very beautiful. I mean, yeah, this is one of the best maps, one of the best designs I've actually seen for a long time for Battle for Middle Earth games. And I'm so happy now that we are able to use this map for Rise of the Witch King, which was existing in Battle for Middle Earth 2, patch 1.09, for a long time. The second Orc Pit is coming up, and the Haradrim Palace at the same time from Erby, after three resource buildings. He's gonna go for three production buildings. They can afford it because, let's be honest, orcs are very cheap. They are the cheapest units you can you can actually recruit in the game. After them, uh, it's gonna be goblin warriors. They cost only 100 each. Ralmaster into the Ganzabad warriors. We know the fact that they should be able to win the one v one fights, but you still need to be careful because the tricky part about those Ralmaster units is when you lose the Ralmaster, that's the last guy here in the battalion, you will lose your entire battalion afterwards. That means you gotta be careful, you need to place them kinda in a position where in which it's gonna be hard for your opponent to reach out to him. 
Especially, we have seen this so many times when we see Engmar against goblins, actually. Because uh, the goblin warriors are able to burst them down really fast with poison blades. But for now, Irby is deciding to play very defensively, which makes sense, because Mordor is a scaling faction. And you want to keep your slaughterhouses alive as long as you can to reach the milestone, to reach the power spike of you know mid game in which you can make Haradrim Lancers, Haradrim Archers, Trolls, Heroes, Black Riders, Catapults. So you have so many amazing units you can choose in the mid to late game. And for that, you need to make sure to survive the early game. All right, double hold off the Kingsman now uh, from the Engmar player. You want to keep up the spam. He want to he keep up with the spam of those orcs. Uh, Irby might later on upgrade the orc pet to level 2 for the black orcs. They are way stronger than normal orcs, so they should also be able to win the 1v1 fights against the Ganzabet warriors. Alright, during all this time, Irby is creeping the troll at the bottom left side with those Easterlings. Very well done. He was also using Eye of Sauron for that. Eye of Sauron is a leadership which can stack with the Warchant. Gonna reveal stealth units like Vision of Palantir or... Uh, you know, the foresight from the Elven faction, and on top of that, you can also get 50% faster combat experience, and again, it's gonna stack with the War Chant, so with two abilities in your spellbook, you can actually make your units way stronger. Uh, Alright, this Slaughterhouse has been protected, but this one has been taken down, which is great for the Angmar player. War Chant is still being active on those Extroverse as they are trying to disengage from those Orcs. Irby was managing to save these two slaughterhouses, which is really important. At you want to at least make sure that you have one of them around, because if you lose all your three starting resource buildings, it's really hard to recover. Luckily, Irby was able to creep the troll layer at the bottom left side. With that being said, he should get some money, especially from a troll layer. You are getting so much more than from creeping a work layer. And now you can also make those Haradrim Spearmen. They are good against Kev and monsters. Which is non-existing, but never mind, I take it back, we have now Wolf Riders on the field. So those those Haradrim uh, Spearmen are, yeah, they are, they are kind of ranged. So you can actually imagine like an extra of a battalion. But their specialty is to kill cavalry units. So if, they are, if you trample them, you're gonna get damaged. And if you don't trample them, they're gonna deal still damage to you from a good distance. Obviously not as long ranged as like archers but can be very good in some certain situations, and they're also cost efficient, because only 300 each. For a, a you know ranged pikeman, it's actually quite cost efficient. Irby is playing very defensively. He's gonna go for the troll cage next, uh, so far away from the fortress, which is not gonna be protected well, and he needs to make sure to make some more easter links, I'm assuming. Wolf Rider Battalion has been taken down around this area. Nice trample into the uh, orc archers here from Irby. But he has not many units remaining anymore, and he will be forced potentially to retreat. And Irby might go for the first attack. At, actually, he was attacking already with those Easterlings. And this is Easterling Battalion is already level 3, which is huge. Uh, Wolf Riders from the Troll and Wolf 10, double hold of the Kingsmen, and both of them are still only level 1. And after getting those Trolls on the field, I think it's gonna be much easier to defend yourself for the Mordor faction, for Irby in this case. And I think it's gonna force also the Engmar player Sauron to make more uh, like units like Hill Trolls, Dark Rangers. You know, I would like to see more Dark Rangers because Hill Trolls are great when the Trolls are deciding to fight them. But that's not gonna be the case. And Hill Trolls are, you know, like all the other pikemen, quite immobile. Unlike a Troll who can always outrun them. So if you micro your trolls well enough, I think you will be always able to get away from those hill trolls. Uh, while dark ranges, if you have many of them at the same time on the field, they can burst down those trolls from a very safe and long distance. But the pressure is real. Um, he might go for the creep at the right side of the river. He has also units around the bottom left side. He will now be capturing this um, signal. For, I mean, this in because the Haradrim spearman, since his command points kept right now. Can't join the fight. He has only 350 command points, by the way, as Engma has right now 475. But Irby is not even that behind, I would say, because that's gonna be the third creep of Irby. He was getting decent amount of money. Warchan is being used from Engma, uh, uh, Rallying Call, I mean, Eye of Sauron being used from the Mordor player. 
Aradrim Spearmen are not a great choice against Gandabad Warriors, obviously. And Mordor has 8.5 power points collected, which is great. Again, those creeps, there's two war creeps at the bottom right side, the left side of the river, and the troll there at the bottom left side were helping Irby out a lot. And he went for a troll cage, and Mountain Troll is on his way. But the pressure is real. Engma player keeps up the pressure all the time. Luckily for Irby, he will have sooner or later a massive army advantage. I mean, yeah, the army is gonna be kinda based on orcs almost exclusively, with some Easterlings being around, and now one troll joining the fight. That makes the army very squishy. But remember, the orcs they have a horse bonus. So when gathered in numbers of 100 or more, they will be passively dealing 25% increased damage. Once they are level 2, they're gonna have the Bloodlust, which is gonna increase their damage also by 25%, that always stacks. Stacks with the Eye of Sauron and with the Horde bonus. And at some point you can also go for the Warchan, which also stacks. So you have so many abilities and buffs kinda, that can stack with each other. And you can even make those weak orcs pretty strong. And Arby is being in a great spot. I mean, in no time you see Mordor dominating an early game, which is really challenging. And if Mordor normally dominates the early game, the game is gonna be over within 10 minutes. I mean, it's 100% normal that Mordor is struggling early on, but Arby was doing a great job defending himself. Now he has even the power points he needs for the industry, which might be used on this Lotta house here, in between those three production buildings. Two Orc pits and one Haradrim palace, level one. The slaughterhouse is gonna be taken down. Irby has a huge army in the middle of the map. Uh, he's gonna try to get one more troll, but the problem he has right now is not the money income he has, but the re uh, but the command points capped. That's a problem, as he can't get more units on the field now. Whiteman of Dunland coming from the Engmar player from the inn at the bottom left side. Whiteman of Dunland are a great unit, a type, I mean, also unique because you have a pillage build in them. That means whenever they attack enemy structures, no torches. Actually, he, I can't see the torches for some reason. Torches doesn't work. It looks like it didn't work on the, on them for some reason. I couldn't even see them, but it was look, you know, in the description it was like already purchased. So something went wrong, I guess. I'm assuming he also lost the money for that, which is kind of unfortunate, because the upgrade for the torches is quite expensive. Okay, Siege Works is coming up for the Mordor player, the Troll Cage was saved. And because the torches didn't work, he loses so much damage boost. Remember those Wildman of Dunland with the purchase torches are very effective when it comes to down, when it comes to, uh, you know, burst those structures down within seconds. Both riders are here now, again, so I think so far I don't see any hero from any players. It might be changed soon, I'm, I'm assuming. He might go for the Black Riders, by the way. Eye of Sauron is being used from the Mordor player in the middle of the map. There is a tower protecting this pathway as well. And the Stroll, Easterlings and Orcs are going for a small attack. And yeah, I mean, Engma player can't underestimate the damage output from this army. Especially from this Mountain Troll. You can see he's able to burst down those structures quite fast. He, on the other side, is being able to take down one of those level 1 slaughterhouses. Let's see how much more damage he will be able to deal. Warchan is being used offensively. Troll is able to knock, kill so many Troll Master units at the same time, smashing them down. Pikes were not able to damage him. And many of those units are down already, so I'm assuming uh, the modder player Irby should be able to defend himself around this area. And Irby again, with a faction like Mordor, everyone is complaining about. Uh, without abusing the power of the mountain trolls that much, everyone is complaining about. <laughs> uh, proves that he can play with any faction in Rise of the Witch King, but we also need to give credits to Sauron, who always, who normally plays always and exclusively Battle for Middle Earth 2. And keep in mind that in, Biet in Battle for Middle Earth 2, Engmar is not existing as a faction. So he is trying to master a faction which was never existed in Battle for Middle Earth 2. Okay, we have 600 command points now, 10 power points collected by Irby. He can also go for the War Chant or Tinted Land or both at the same time. Also save for 15 if he wants to. Builder here has to be careful now. We are getting more and more Mountain Trolls on the field. But finally, Sauron has some Dark Rangers to counter them. This mill level almost 3 is gonna be taken down. 
He didn't go for the uh, Snowbind. He has now 11 power points collected. The troll got knocked down. Will, it, will this be enough to burst him down? That's the question. I think it's gonna be enough. And the Dark Rangers were able to finish him off. They're hitting level 2 now. Wolf Riders and Extrovers are going for harassment. The Slaughterhouse is gonna be their target. Uh, troll Cage is still level 1. Haradrim Palace is level 3, by the way. As we're gonna see some of those Haradrim Arches soon. I feel like Arch of Fight is something you should not be trying to take against Engma. Because Engma will have Felwind long shot from those Dark Rangers, which makes it almost impossible to win this Archer against Archer fights exclusively. But I think you can always make a Drama Troll, as Engma, again, like mentioned in the game before, doesn't have a fear resistant. The Drama Troll's Roar ability might be very effective in this situation. And also, they're gonna give leadership, obviously. For the dark uh, for the Haradrim archers. And Black Riders are also on their way. So I don't know. Black Riders are definitely the strongest, you know, mini hero units in Rise of the Witch King. Also something which is not existing in Battle for Middle Earth 2. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I didn't even see this before. What is what is going on here? It's so funny. Alright. So Mordred is preparing himself for the attack. This is under control from the Engma player. He stopped making the uh, Hillman units, Wildman of Dunland. Power is protecting, but should not be enough to hold them down. The builder from Sauron has to get away. Will be able to build a wall hub. The Dark Rangers are doing a great job. Eye of Sauron will be used and commitment on the battle tower. Even without the Dark, uh, without the Black Riders. Longshot is incoming, the weak armor of these orcs and easterlings are gonna make them die and, you know, get heavy damage. With, even with the whole crown stands, those easterlings are almost getting one-shotted. And the game is freezing right now. I really hope that no one is gonna have... Never mind, we are back. Okay, beautiful. I was scared for a second in a half, guys. Not gonna lie. Okay. Um, yeah, Black Riders, we have a bunch of orcs. But he has actually splitted uh, his Dark Rangers a little bit too much, I guess. Just like in the previous game. I mean, Rangers, Archers in general are very weak in terms of defensive abilities. So if you leave them open like that, especially those Black Riders, very strong units, he can trample them down and take them down in a second. So maybe after seeing those Black uh, Riders, after seeing the Mountain Troll spam from the Moto player, and now even Haradrim Archers, uh, you know, it could be the right time. Oh, the worm is gonna be very effective here. He might be forced to go for the snowbind. He is going for it. He needs to use it to save the level 3 Hall of the Kingsman. But the troll in Lofton is gonna be taken down, and the damage output from this worm is insane. He might also lose the level 3 mill after that. Maybe the frozen, uh, the snowbind was a little bit too early, and the time remaining is still more than halfway. Um, before it's before he's gonna leave the Middle Earth, so he might have the time still to finish off this Hall of the Kingsman. But let's see. Snowbind is available for the next fight. Felwind is available for the next fight, and Warchant is available for the next fight from the Engmar player. But he's struggling. He doesn't have that many units on the field, and that's what I meant before. Actually, those Dark Rangers are doing a great job and great amount of damage against the Worm, who might not be able to finish this level three Hall of the Kingsman. And this level 3 mill, let's see, one more attack, but not enough. Oh, that was unlucky for Mordor, but lucky for Engma. I don't think it's gonna change anything, though, because Mordor has such an upper hand. We have right now uh, 600 command points collected, 650 now, for the Engma player, Sauron. He was luckily able to save this level 3 mill, has to make sure to make more of these Dark Rangers, but unfortunately, he didn't purchase the banner carry upgrade. Frozen land will be used on top of the enemy units. And the uh, Felvin was used. That's gonna slow them down. You can see those Dark Rangers are putting in some nice work as the Black Riders are all about to trample them. They're quite tanky. Warchant is gonna be used, but again, they don't have any protection. And to be honest, Black Riders are not even being needed. Because the Haradrim Arches are doing such a great job as well. The Catapult is gonna be taken down as we have Trollstone Trovers coming from Sauron for defensive purposes. Sauron was just losing a build around this area, and those Black Riders are still remaining on the field. Those really weak pikemen, they can't fight them. 
I mean, that's what I meant before. I think, uh, I mean, now it's not going to be possible anymore as he lost the Troll and Loftan. But upgrading the Troll and Loftan to level 2 will give you the chance to get those Hillmen, one of the strongest pikemen in the game, on the field. Especially after seeing, you know, Haradrim Archers and Black Riders. And again, you're going to need some protection for your Black Rangers. Look at this. They are getting one-shotted at this point. They don't have any protection. And the debuff is coming in clutch as well from those Black Riders. The enemy units are losing damage and armor, which makes it much, much easier. And another builder has been taken down. And the game is gonna be over. And Irby with a clean 2 0 victory, boys. Very well, very well played by Slovenian player. I mean. I'm quite excited about the matches which might happen in the near future in the World Championship between those two players, Sauron against Irvi. Sauron has still some time to train to actually improve his gameplay as he's right now trying to improve his Engma. And I think he's on, he's on a really great way to do that. He has some time until the matches are gonna happen and if they keep winning all the time, they're gonna eventually face against each other, like I said, in the quarterfinals semi-finals or even the grand finals of the world championship thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this one please make sure to follow me on my twitch channel twitch tv slash beyond standards the link for that is gonna be in the video description below we're gonna host we're gonna stream many many world championship games in the following days and if you're watching that over at youtube guys you know what you need to do you want to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this See you next time, until then, take care of yourselves and, as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.